Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good morning, everybody. Those I've not spoken to, Ms. Gay. Um, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Pretty good. Valley one yesterday? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was an exciting day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, just a friendly reminder that uh, started the first Sunday was geared toward the adults and the third Sunday the youth. So uh, started next third next first Sunday. I'm, I will call and ask uh, somebody if they'll do scripture and stuff like that for the first Sunday, and we get these children back to the third Sunday. Uh, so today, uh, I wanted to start off by telling you uh, a few little things as I open it. I attended uh, a, the United Methodist sent me a link uh, for uh, uh, doing worship services on, on Zoom. And the meeting was two and a half hours long and I got bored after about 15 minutes of it. Hmm. Uh, but uh, a couple of things that he said right at the very beginning made a lot of sense. And, and but that's for, I, I'm assuming your larger churches that's able to put up the uh, music and stuff on screen. So we're gonna continue to do ours the way we've been doing it. I just want to ask some of the adults if you'll start back helping to do this stuff on first Sunday. Uh, today is uh, October the 3rd. And just a reminder that we've made it this far by faith. Uh, there are 276 days left in this year, uh, 6,624 hours, mm -hmm. of which we can say there's uh, 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 a lot of time is, is gone, but we still got some left. Uh, we've, we've come through since the first of this year, 276 days, uh, which amounts to about 397, 440 minutes. Time that we cannot recall or we can't do it over. We just have to let it rest in peace. But there are 89 days left in 2021 or 2,136 hours or 128,160 minutes. And what we need to try to do is make each one of them count. Um, mm -hmm. We can't forget our past, but we don't have to wallow in it. Uh, another reminder, there are seven weeks to Thanksgiving, 11 weeks to Christmas, and 18 weeks to the 2022 Super Bowl. All right. Uh, so, I, so again, what we need to do is give some praise and thanks. Uh, so let's listen to this song. I hope you can hear it. Praise, 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 praise,
Okay, our announcements this morning are falling within uh, 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 announcements that the pastor will send to you uh, through, uh, through Zoom invitations for the finance committee meetings and administrative board meetings uh, for this month. Our scripture lesson this morning is coming from the book of Job. Uh, the book of Job is has 42 chapters 1070 verses and the book is full of of, of poetry uh, relationships stress loss gain pain suffering characters it it deals with beliefs and faith endurance bad advice challenges uh, it's it's a it's a it's a book that job even cursed the day that he was born uh because he was in so much has has had so many problems and and but it also goes back to giving giving praise and letting every praise uh go to our god it starts this sermon will come from the Second chapter, verses one through 10. And I am reading from a New King James Version. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also along with, among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? And there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. And still he holds fast to his integrity, 
Although you incited me against him, just destroy him without cause. So Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. Yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. But stretch out your head now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, he is in your head, but spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. <laughs> and he took for himself a post shed with which to scrape himself while he sat in the midst of the ashes. Then his wife said to him, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. Mm -hmm. But he said to her, you speak as one of the foolish woman speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God and, sh and shall we not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We will now have our morning prayer and then sermon from Pastor uh, Carpenter. All right. Amen. Uh, let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we want to thank you. We want to thank you because you've been so good to us. We thank you, Lord, that we allowed us, that you allowed us another opportunity to come back together to fellowship one more time and to worship you in this virtual space. Lord, we, we, we thank you because we know whether we're in the sanctuary, outside the sanctuary, online, wherever we are, Lord, we, we feel your presence, Lord. And we thank you for your presence, Lord, because your presence uh, gives us hope, gives us hope, gives us peace, Lord, even in the midst of our difficulties that we are experiencing in our lives. Lord, we ask that you forgive us of our sins, creating us clean hearts and renewing right spirit within us, Lord. Lord, touch us, Lord. Lead us and guide us down the path of righteousness for your name's sake, Lord. Lord, we ask that you will help us to become more like you. We lift up each member of this church, Lord, and our, and our families, Lord. You know what we all stand in need of, Lord. Lord, rain down your blessings, Lord. And uh, Lord, help us, Lord, to overcome our many adversities that we are dealing with in this life. Lord, we ask that you will protect us from COVID-19, Lord. And, and not only that, those who have been stricken with at uh, this present time, Lord, heal those people right now, Lord. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that you will give people the, the willing mind and willing heart to do right, Lord, with this Amen. pandemic, Lord. To stop all of this fussing and fighting and lying and scheming, Lord. Touch the people right now, Lord, because... It's all about you, Lord. It's all about protecting one another, Lord. Lord, we ask that you will anoint me as I bring your message on today, Lord. And Lord, let your Holy Spirit have its way, Lord. And we ask that you will look over the, the sick and shut-in members, Lord. Not only this church, Lord, but everywhere, Lord. Lord, just touch them right now. Heal them. Deliver them, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that you continue to have your way in this worship experience and let, and let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeeming. Let the church say amen. 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 Uh, we're going to move on. You, you, you heard the scripture that was read to you uh, that came from Job, the uh, second chapter, verses 1 through 10. And I will use as a theme for my message on today, exercising faith in the midst of adversity. Exercising faith in the midst of adversity. Yeah. But my brothers and sisters, in these in times like these that we are living in, we are dealing with all types of trials and tribulations. 
we are dealing with various kinds of sickness, including COVID-19. We are dealing with so much troubles in our lives and in our communities. We are dealing with people dying every day all around us. We are dealing with violence and killings in our communities, which seems like daily. Some of us are experiencing all types of suffering in our lives. Some of us are dealing with various family challenges. Some of us are dealing with various financial difficulties. Some of us are dealing um, with other type of challenges that, that just, just have us burned down. Our community seems to be in disarray. It seems that our politicians are more concerned about political gain than about transforming our communities. Some of us are wondering, will we ever experience peace and tranquility in this world? We must remember that we are in the midst of a spiritual warfare against Satan and his angels. Satan is at work 24 hours a day attacking God's creation. We must remember that it is not the people that are destructive, but Satan and his evil spirits that are at work in people, including us at times. In looking at our text, we find Satan appearing before the Lord once again in the courts of heaven. This time Satan implied that Job's faithfulness to God would soon depart if he was allowed to touch Job's body. God gave him permission to do so. Remember that Satan does nothing without the permission from God. You may ask, why would God allow Satan to do the things that he does? Yes, that is true that God is holy, he's righteous. But I believe that God uses Satan to test us. God to test us to see if we are committed to him or are we committed to this world. Either we are for God or we are against God. There are four points that I will discuss on today. Point number one, you must remember that even in the midst of troubles, we still must maintain integrity. Here in, in, in verse three of our text, we see that God singled out Job as an ideal example of a man that was committed to being a, a God-fearing man. No, Job was not a perfect man, but none of us are, of course. But Job's uh, commitment to God was commendable. Even in the midst of Job's various trials and tribulations, he still maintained integrity. His character was tested, but he will not give in to Satan and his tactics. My brothers and sisters, whenever we are under attack by Satan, don't give in to his lies and deceit. Don't follow him because all he does is trying to trap you. We must remember, we must remain steadfast in the midst of our spiritual storms that we face. We must continue to give reverence to God and turn from evil with the help of the Holy Spirit. Point number two, God gives power to Satan to attack us in order to test our faith. In verses four through six of our text, we see that Satan was saying that if God, I mean, if Job was attacked physically, Job would curse God. Where God said, okay, I hear you talking. Job is in your power right now, but only spare his life. If you read chapter one, we see that Job lost his property. He lost his children, his cattle and other things. Yet Job did not lose his faith. Even in the midst of his grieving, Job maintained integrity and faith in God. Satan felt that if he can attack Job's health, Job would turn away from God and curse God. God allowed Satan to afflict, to afflict Job, but he gave him limits by telling him, do not take his life. 
This let us know that God is in control, the control of every situation. Nothing that happens in our lives that God does not allow it to happen. Whenever we face trials and tribulations, don't fret. It is our test of faith to see if our allegiance to God will change. Remember that Satan is powerless without God. Without Satan, we would not need to exercise faith. We got to realize, in other words, we need Satan in our lives in order, in order for us to truly understand and appreciate the power of God, the grace and mercy of God, and understand why we truly, truly need to depend on God. Because if without adversity, we will take God for granted. We can be a bit like, I don't need God. But yes, we know we need God because Satan is always at work attacking us. Point number three, all of us face attack from Satan. In verse two, in verse seven and eight of our text, we see that Satan attacked Joel with bars and swords that cover his entire body. Imagine your entire body covered with bars and swords from the from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Joel was suffering tremendously. He took a posture to scrape himself. Joe may have done this to relieve the itching or to break open the sores on his body. This text said that Job sat among the ashes, which was a sign of mourning. This also may have indicated that Job became an outcast, sitting in a trash heap outside of the city. My brothers and sisters, all of us will face physical suffering. If you have not faced any physical suffering, just keep on living, because your day is coming. Now, plus, we have to remember that it is an honor to suffer for Christ, because he suffered for us. Not only will we suffer physical pains, but we also will suffer spiritual pain, because Satan will try to attack us with financial challenges, drug or alcohol abuse, domestic violence, loss of jobs, crime, COVID-19, and so much more. Yes, God will allow Satan to attack us and we all will face attack, some shape, form, or fashion. And the reason Satan attack us because he know we are on the battle line, we are on the, we are on the battlefield for the Lord. And we are, when we are on the battlefield for the Lord, Satan is going to try to attack us. Satan is going to try to lie to us, deceive us, to, to know that our attention will be taken away from God. Point number four. Don't curse God in the midst of your suffering. Don't curse God in the midst of your suffering. In verse 9 and 10 of our text, here we see that Job's wife asked him if he would still persist in his integrity in the midst of suffering. She then told Job to curse God and die. But Job told his wife that she was speaking as a foolish woman. Now, before we go on and want to pass judgment on Job's wife, Let's look at things from his wife's perspective. She, being his wife, was there witnessing how Job was suffering. <laughs> she was concerned about what was going on with Job. She was grieving over his suffering. Uh, his wife wanted Joe's misery to end, even if it means that he had to die. Yes, she sounded foolish. But keep in mind, but she spoke from a loving wife perspective. Keep this in mind 
No one wants to see their spouse or children suffer. No one. We, so we should not condemn Job's wife. Because what would you do if you saw your uh, 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 husband, wife, or children suffering? Not to say that she was right, because she was not right in the spiritual realm. But, but she came from a loving respect. She loved her husband so much that she just could not stand to see him suffering anymore. Now, Job was not calling his wife a fool. Rather, Job was saying that her advice was foolish because she was speaking with her emotions. Job told her that we have to accept the good along with the bad from God. Because every day will not be a good day for us. Some days we're going to have some ups. Some days we're going to have some down. Yes. Some days we're going to feel good. Some days we're going to feel bad. But a difficult day must take place. In Job's brief speech to his wife, he again recognized God's sovereignty. He pointed out that God, as the creator, was free to give and fail to take away from us. Although he did not understand what was going on, Job viewed his suffering as a part of God's plan. My brothers and sisters, we don't have to understand our suffering, but we must trust God's plan in the midst of our suffering. We got to realize that in the midst of our suffering, we will be drawn closer to God. In closing, there is a difference between cursing God and speaking against God and his plan in comparison to grieving honestly and openly. My brothers and sisters, keep in, keep in mind that uh, you can say to your friends how much it hurts you, and you can say to God how much you are in pain and that you don't understand. That's one thing. But cursing God is something totally different. As Christians, we are not called to ignore or turn away from our pain, but continue to worship God in the midst of our pain. Suffering can also be used by God to transform us, especially when it is done for the sake of the gospel. In such cases, suffering serves as a mark of our identity as children of God. And keep in mind the benefits outweigh the costs that arise from it. Our suffering is meant for us to turn back to God and to call on God for our deliverance. Ultimately, the New Testament portrays suffering as an expression of our unity with Christ's suffering, thereby advancing the cause of the gospel. Again, we got to suffer for Jesus. Jesus said, if we want to come out, if we want to follow him, we got to take up our cross and follow him. So don't worry about it, you got to suffer. Because when you suffer, you are suffering for Jesus. My brothers and sisters, the Bible teaches us that God shares in our suffering. The incarnation of Jesus most clearly portrayed this by taking on the flesh and shared in all the trademarks of the human condition, even unto the brutal death on the cross. Romans 8, 28 tell us that all things work together for good for those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. I know it's hard to believe this when we are experiencing baffling and horrific events, but when we are a child of God, we know in the end, everything will be all right. I'm reminded of the story in Genesis 50 and 20, 
where Joseph's brothers betrayed him and sold him to slavery. Decades later, Joseph told them, yes, for you, uh, you plan all of these evil acts against me, but God meant it for my good. You know, so we got to realize that when Satan tried to attack us, you know, he may think he's getting the upper hand, but God is using it for our good. We got to have faith even in the midst of our adversity. Jesus promised that there would be trouble in this life, but he also proclaimed that he overcame the world. Although trouble is not, is trouble is unpreventable, we can still find joy because of what Christ has done on the cross. My brothers and sisters, when we face hardships, remember Jesus on the cross. When we face disappointment, remember Jesus on the cross. When we face COVID-19, remember Jesus on the cross. When we face cancer, remember Jesus on the cross. When we face diabetes, Remember Jesus on the cross. When we face high blood pressure, remember Jesus on the cross. When we face all other forms of sickness, remember Jesus on the cross. When we face hunger, remember Jesus on the cross. When we face drug or alcohol abuse, remember Jesus on the cross. When we face mental health challenges, remember Jesus on the cross. When we face persecution, remember Jesus on the cross. When we face challenges in our communities, remember Jesus on the cross. When we face challenges in our churches, remember Jesus on the cross. When we face systemic racism and oppression, remember Jesus on the cross. If you are spiritually lost, remember Jesus on the cross and accept him as your Lord and Savior. He died to deliver us from the power of sin and Satan. In Christ, remember that Satan has no control over our lives. We have been delivered from Satan. We are liberated from Satan. We have eternal life in the name of Jesus. We have healing in the name of Jesus. Let us exercise faith in the midst of adversity as we continue to focus on our mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of this world. I'm here to let you know, don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give out. Because I know a man who sits high and he looks no looks low and he understands all that we are going through. I'm here to let you know that tell say, tell say, get behind me. Tell say, get your hands off me. Tell say, get your hands off of my family. Tell say, get your hands off of my church. Tell say, get your hands out of off my community. Tell say, you have no power anymore. Tell Satan he has been defeated in the name of Jesus. Tell Satan I'm not going to spend eternity with you. I'm making preparations to spend eternity with Jesus. And, and, and keep in mind, tell Satan that you can try to hurt me. You can try to attack me. You can make cause me to weep. But tell Satan weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm here to let you know that all is well with your life. All is well in your family. Keep in mind that little suffering that we're dealing with does not compare to the glory that's gonna, that we're gonna experience. I'm here to let you know that Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house 
I made him mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I'm going, to, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I'm going to prepare a place for you, I'm coming again to receive you unto myself. He said, where I am, you may be also. And he was asked the question, how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. I'm here to let you know in Jesus, we have healing. In Jesus, we have life. In Jesus, we have way. But more importantly, in Jesus, we have salvation. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen. The doors of this church is open. If there's anybody that don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sin, today is a good day. Tomorrow is not promised to any one of us. As a matter of fact, the next moment, it's not promised. Yeah. It's the one that said, I have strayed, but I'm ready to come back home to you, Lord. I'm ready to recommit my life to you. Today is a good day. Because while we have breath in our bodies, we need to commit our lives to Jesus. Because he is our only hope for salvation. Amen. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter what you are doing. It doesn't matter the life you are living. It doesn't matter. You may think that I, I, I've done so bad. I just, you know, I, I, I just, I know I, I just, I'm just ain't no good. I'm here to let you know you give your life to Christ. He would take care of the best. I'm here to let you know you give your life to Jesus. He will deliver you from your circumstances. In your life with Jesus, you are a new creature. Your old life is gone. Your new life will begin. And, and through Jesus, you will be transformed to become more like him. Through Jesus, you will have salvation. You are, and through Jesus, you are redeemed. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. Don't let nobody tell you I, the, the things that, that you're doing. Even if you're still doing things, you know it's not right. That's okay. It's not right, but it's okay. Because Jesus is going to help you to get on the right path. You don't have to worry about trying to get right. Because Jesus has sent the Holy Spirit to help each one of us. Yeah. Today, a good day. Today is a day that you can make your preparation for your final destination. And Jesus got his arms open wide. There's room for you here at Raspberry United Methodist Church there on Roosevelt Street in the heart of Indianola, Mississippi. Not too far around, around the corner from B.B. King Barrett. There's room for you here. But more important, there's room for you at the cross. Yes, amen. Amen. And amen. 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 I thank God for each of you on today. Uh, so, as uh, Miss Virginia alluded to earlier, uh, we, 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 we will have our finance committee meeting and administrative council meeting this month. So we can start making preparations to have to have everything in order, so we can be able to have a productive meeting and uh, be about God's guests. Amen. I also want to remind you that the twenty fourth of this month, I might have mentioned a few weeks back, that we will have a charge conference, a regional charge conference bills on. 
So as soon as I get the Zoom invite, I will make sure I pass along with you. And I invite each of you. It's going to be again the 24th of October, the fourth Sunday at 6 30 p.m. And I invite each of you to participate. I want us to represent Raspberry in big numbers. I want you to go in there and let everybody can know that Raspberry is in the house. That Raspberry is, is committed to being about God's business. Amen. I look forward to us having a productive charge conference. Is there anything else that, cl that claims our attention before we uh, give the benediction? There'll be, there'll, be, there'll be none. I want to thank God for each of you that join in uh, for worship service. We might be few in number, but that's okay. I remember when Jesus said, where there's two or three gathered together in his name, he said he is in the midst. It doesn't always take a crowd to have a good time. All it takes that we talked about in Sunday school. If you bring something, you're going to get something. Amen. If nothing else, if, if nothing else uh, let us close with the benediction. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believe so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Y'all be blessed. Y'all get situated. Get ready to watch these football games. And, and those who also love basketball, get ready for these basketball season coming up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Y'all be blessed. And y'all take care of them. Enjoy your day. Well, they still on. <laughs>